Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tammy. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on beginning Sprite Kit. In this part of the series, you'll learn how to port Zombie Conga to the Apple TV. The Apple TV has been around for a while, but it wasn't until late October 2015 that Apple released a new device and along with it, tvOS. This changed the game for third-party developers because now we can create apps for the Apple TV. But what does it take to port your Sprite Kit game to tvOS? Honestly, not too much. Because Apple TV leverages existing frameworks like Sprite Kit, getting your game to run on the big screen can be done with just a few minor modifications. Before we jump into the demo to see how this is done, there's one thing I'd like to cover, and that's top shelf images and app icons. The app icon has a layered effect, and this is achieved using multiple images and getting it set up is easier than you think. The top shelf image is what shows up in the top shelf when the user puts your app in the top row and then focuses on your app. This content may be static or dynamic. Okay, time to get our zombie onto the big screen. We'll start by adding a target for the Apple TV. In the lower left hand corner, click the plus button. When prompted to choose a template, select the tvOS application game template and then click Next. For the product name, enter Zombie Conga TV. Then click Finish. You'll notice that it created a Zombie Conga TV group. Inside this group are similar files that you have seen throughout this video tutorial series. Just like before, there are a few files that we won't need. Let's get rid of those now. You'll notice that I've highlighted three, gamescene.sks, gamescene.swift, and the game assets. Select those files, right click, then delete, and move them to the trash. Because we've created another target in our project, we're able to share files. Let's keep our project clean by creating a shared group. Inside this shared group, we'll move the files that we intend to share between the two targets. You'll notice I have My Utils, Game Scene, Game Over Scene, Main Menu Scene, the assets, the font, and the sounds folder selected. These are all things that we'll share between the two targets, so select those and drag them into the shared group. There's another thing that we'll need to do in order to make sure that these files are available in our new target. Go ahead and select all of the files that you just moved into the shared folder. You'll have to expand sounds and then individually select each file inside of the sounds group. Go ahead and do that now. Once you have all of the files selected, expand the utilities panel if it's not already expanded. You'll notice that there's a target membership area. You'll also notice that Zombie Conga TV is not currently checked. Check the Zombie Conga TV to make sure that these files are available in that target as well. There are just a few more things we need to do in order to get this game ready for the Apple TV. You may have remembered that we added our own font, and we had to make that change in the info.p list to let the application know that we've added some additional fonts. We need to do the same thing in the Apple TV target. So head down to the info.plist in the Zombie Conga TV target and modify the info.plist the way that you did earlier. And again, that was adding a new key. And the name of that key is fonts provided by application. And for item zero, you're simply typing in the font file name. There's just a couple more things that we need to do. You may notice that we've got two files with the name of assets. So we'll need to change one of these so there's no conflict. Let's change the one under the shared group. We'll change it from assets to game. Excellent. 
Now the final thing to do is modify the Zombie Conga TV Game View Controller. As you can see, the GameViewController.swift file contains a lot of boilerplate code. We'll need to get rid of that and replace it with our own code. For example, we're not loading the game scene here, we're going to be loading the main menu scene. So delete the code that's in there now and replace it with the following. There's nothing new going on in the code that we just added, and in fact, it's pretty similar to what we have in the GameViewController Swift for the iOS devices. The reason that we're using a different GameViewController is because there are slight differences between how the Apple TV works and how the iOS devices work. All right, so now is a great time to build and run. But before we can do that, we need to switch our target. Notice I've selected the tvOS simulator, Apple TV 1080p. Once you've done that, go ahead and build and run. Incidentally, if you do not see an Apple TV remote, like I have here, you can go up to Hardware and choose Show Apple TV Remote. This will toggle the remote on and off. So if yours is not showing, go ahead and hit that now. You'll also notice that there's this hold option to touch. In order for you to use this touch surface, you'll need to hold the option key on your keyboard. Go ahead and do that now and tap it. So you can see, it almost looks like everything is working great. And I say almost, and that's because as you move the zombie, you'll notice that the more you move him, the more wonky it becomes. So we'll need to fix that. Let's start by going to the gamescene.swift file and adding some type of sprite so you can see and track the finger and the touch location. This will help you with debugging any issues that you might have further on down the road. Just gonna make some room here. All right, let's scroll down and create, we'll do it right under here. We're going to create two variables. Well, actually one is a constant. One is touch box, and that will be a sprite node, a colored sprite node. And the other one is a variable, a prior touch. And this will help us know where exactly to move the zombie when we're tracking the touches on the remote. Because remember, it's very different touching an on-screen location versus touching a surface on the remote. So let's get these two things added now. Now that we have a place to hold our prior touch and a sprite node, a colored sprite node, let's add that sprite node to the scene. We'll do that in did move to view. Let's put that right before we make a call to debug draw playable area. So essentially we're just adding our sprite node to the scene. Now we have to find a way to track our touches. We can use touches began and touches moved, but we have to do a little something different for the Apple TV. First, let's scroll down and find those functions. So here we are at our touches began and touches moved. We'll need some way to check whether we're running on tvOS or iOS. We'll also need to do something a little bit different based on whether or not we're on TV OS or iOS. The first thing we'll need to do is get rid of this move zombie toward location because that will not work for the TV OS. This, however, will. So as you can see on line 418, we're saying set the touch box position to the touch location. And this again is just for debugging. Then we're saying set the prior touch to the location, but only if it's tvOS. Otherwise, move the zombie toward the touch location. So far, so good, right? But now let's move to touches moved. This is where things get a little interesting. And I'm going to give us a little extra space here and move that up to the top. But once again, we don't need the move zombie toward touch location because again, we're going to determine what to do based on what OS we're on.
So as you can see, once again, we're deciding whether or not we're on tvOS or iOS. We're getting our offset based on the touch location minus the prior touch location. We're then setting our direction and our velocity, and we're using a blending of our prior touch plus our touch location to know exactly where to move the zombie. And we're only doing that if it's tvOS. Otherwise, we're just going to move zombie toward whatever the touch location is. So let's build and run and see how this goes. You may not be able to tell initially, but the zombie movement is much smoother. So much so that I won! Woohoo! Alright, so now we've got a working game for the Apple TV. But there's one thing that we need to do that we've not done yet. And let me just show you the simulator real quick. You'll notice that there's no app icon. And in fact, when we scroll over to it, there's also a blank screen up here in the top shelf. So let's address those two things right now. Included with this video tutorial are some more resources. Inside the resources folder, you'll see four additional folders. You'll see them here on the right hand side. Head over to the assets in the Zombie Conga TV group, and you'll notice that we've got essentially an app icon and top shelf image, as well as a launch image. Let's start adding our launch image and our top shelf image first. So select the launch image. Inside the launch image, you'll see an image and just drag it over. Go to the top shelf image and do the same thing, except this time go into top shelf and drag that over. And now here you've got the app icon large and app icon small. Apple TV uses a layered effect for their app icons. If you look into the app icon large resource folder, you'll notice that there are five layers, yet there are only three layers here. You'll need to add two more, and you can do that by hitting the plus button down at the bottom and choosing new Apple TV image stack layer. And in fact, you'll need to do that twice. Because we're using the same large and small icon, which is definitely recommended, do the same thing under the app icon small and add those two additional layers. Now let's populate the large one first. So go ahead and select the large and you'll notice that you've got front, middle, layer one, layer two, and incidentally, you can rename these if you want. We won't do it here, but we're going to start with the back layer first, the bottom most layer. And essentially, we're just going to drag these things in. And you can kind of get a preview of what your app icon will look like. Let's do the same thing for the app icon small. Check our preview to make sure that it looks good. And now let's build and run. We're going to go back out to the menu. And now you can see we've got our top shelf image. We have our app icon with its layers and everything looks fantastic on the Apple TV. That's it for this video tutorial, and now we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge is to remove all of the debug views and print statements to get this game production worthy. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.